In this video, we're going to learn about integrating the center of mass. To do that, we first have to talk about something called a differential equation, which is a form of calculus where we'll use a method called the separation of variables to get our answer. So, like in this example, you are trying to find what y is equal to if you know that its derivative is 5x squared over 2 you might immediately be able to see that you can just integrate, take the antiderivative to get that. But separation of variables is a way for us to sort of rewrite this equation and then integrate on both sides to get our answer. So here's what it looks like. You would multiply both sides by dx, which we call the infinitesimal, but it's also known as a differential. And then we would get dy equals 5x squared over 2 dx. Now that these are separated on the left and the right side, you can integrate either side. Um, and on the left, you would get y plus, we'll say, c. And then on the right, you would get 5 over 2. You'd raise x to the power of 3, so it really is 5 over 6, plus we'll call that d. Um, but because these are both constants, I can actually subtract c from both sides and write y equals 5 6 x to the third plus I don't know we can call it e where e is equal to d minus c some new constant now an alternative way of solving this differential equation would be to give it some bounds 0 to y and 0 to x doing this basically just eliminates our constants of integration. So we would get y on the left here, and this would give us uh, the same thing, 5, 6, x cubed, um, but we would have no constant integration on that side of the equation, and we would get ourselves a definite answer. Again, it's kind of like saying c is 0 and d is 0, so we would just be adding 0 here for our constant integration. So this is how you use separation of variables to solve a differential equation in its most basic form. We're going to use that to solve the integral for the center of mass. Um, but before we do that, we should also talk about mass density. You probably know what density is. It's mass divided by volume. You may not know that we use a Greek letter rho to represent it. So rho is what we use to represent the density of something that has a volume. Um, but for us, we're going to be looking at rods that we pretend are really thin. And so basically their volume is just the length that they have. So when we talk about this linear kind of density, we use lambda, the Greek letter lambda, to talk about it. And it's going to be the total mass of the object divided by not the volume, but instead just x, the length of whatever the object is. This is not on the AP equation sheet, and you kind of have to memorize what it is because it will be used um, elsewhere for moments of inertia when we use rho, and it's just super annoying. So put it somewhere you can remember. Okay, here we go. Center of mass with calculus. A uniform rod has mass m and length l. Using integral calculus, and this is what they will say on the AP test to cue you to do this, show that the center of mass of, rod, of the rod is l over 2. They will also tell you what the center of mass is, so you know what your answer should be. Okay, so we're going to start with our equation, x center of mass equals summa mi xi over summa mi. And we're going to interpret this not as the finite sum, of the product of mass and position over the finite sum of all the masses, and instead the infinite sum over the infinite sum of masses. So we would write this as dm, and then this we would write as xdm, where the rod, if you can imagine having a length l and some mass that we're going to call m, it's basically like saying, well, take this little tiny, tiny piece of mass and summa infinitely added up so you get the total mass and then here you're going to take all the little pieces of mass dms ch -ch 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 -ch, along the entire rod and you're going to multiply them by the positions and add them okay so this is not on your ap equation sheet but of course this is so hopefully you can see how the summas relate to our sigmas finite versus infinite sum and you can just kind of replace them once you see the equation on the ap equation sheet we kind of have a problem, though, because if we integrate from 0 to m for these things, we're going to get a very weird and not correct answer. 
So instead, what we have to do is try and turn these DMs <laughs> into something DX so that we can integrate with respect to position because that's what we're familiar with doing. So here's how we get that. If the density of the rod is its mass over its length x, and that is a constant, that's what the word uniform means, then that also implies that the infinitely small piece of mass dm over the infinitely small position dx would give you the exact same ratio. We can then rewrite this by multiplying both sides by dx, kind of like what we did with separation of variables, and now I have something to replace dm with in my equation. For the top, it's basically going to be, here I'll separate this into two parts. For the top, you're going to have summa x dm, but you replace the dm with lambda dx. And then for the bottom, you would just replace that dm and get summa lambda dx. Now, because the rod, I don't know why I erased it, I'm sorry, goes from positions 0 to L, we're going to make those our bounds, 0 to L. And for the bottom part of the fraction, the integration is super easy because remember that lambda is uniform or constant which means you get to take it outside of your integral. Calculus doesn't get done to constant things. And this is just going to give you lambda x from 0 to L, which means we're just going to replace with x with L. So now I know what to put on the bottom of my fraction for the center of mass equation, lambda times L. For the top, it's a little bit different. The lambda comes out because it's constant, so lambda and then I integrate x dx from 0 to L. But now I'm actually going to get like a, a more reasonable integration that's not just x. I'm going to raise x to the power of 2 and then divide by that 2. Of course, I still need to evaluate from 0 to L. And I'm going to get lambda L squared over 2 as my answer for the top of that fraction. Okay, now all that's left to do is to put those two things in the top and the bottom of our fraction. So the center of mass is going to be lambda L squared over 2, right? That's the top part. And then I'm going to divide by this bottom part. But since it's a fraction, um, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by 1 over lambda L. Hopefully that made sense to you. And now I can see that the lambdas cancel, one of the L's cancel, and I get L over 2 as my center of mass. Great. There's only one other way that the AP test would ask you to do this, and that is with a rod that does not have uniform density. Instead, the density changes throughout. Here's an example. A triangular rod shown below has length L, mass M, and a non-uniform linear mass density. See, see, that's that word. That means lambda, given by the equation lambda where x is the distance from one end of the rod. Using integral calcul calculus, show that the center of mass of the rod is 2L over 3. Okay, so same thing. Right, x center of mass equals summa mi xi over summa mi. That's on your equation sheet. Replace, I'm sorry, sigma sigma. Replace the sigmas with summas. And now start to work on what would your summa x dm equal? And then what would your summa dm be equal to? Again, we're going to replace dm with something that has dx in it. And to do that, I'm going to think, okay, well, lambda is still, even though it's changing, the infinitely small piece of mass is still going to be equal to the infinitely small change in x. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Hold on. It's still equal to the infinitely small change in mass over the infinitely small change in x. Um, only this time when I am going to rewrite this for dm equals lambda dx, I have to be careful 
and replace lambda with the equation that they give me, which would be 2m l squared times x dx. Now, I don't like that they give this to you as 2m over l squared. That's really annoying because it's constant. The total mass and that total length, they're not going to change. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this thing b and replace this with dm equals b x dx because it's a constant the total mass and the total length aren't changing through the problem that's why we use l instead of x to kind of talk about the length and maybe like in the last problem it gets canceled out so let's just call it b and make our lives easier okay so here's how this changes the top and the bottom of our center of mass fraction for the top you would write summa x bx dx whoa and for the bottom you would write summa bx dx now remember b is constant because the total mass and that length they don't change so it is constant which means I can pull that out And again, I'm going to integrate from 0 to L, sorry, to L to get an answer. And now I can see on the bottom, it's pretty easy. I'm going to get bx squared over 2. And then I evaluate that from 0 to L, which thankfully is just bl squared over 2. So that's what goes in the bottom of my fraction. And on the top, this is going to give me bx cubed over 3 which I evaluate from 0 to L, and I'll write this over here, which just gives you BL cubed over 3. So that's the bottom of my fraction, that's the top. To get the center of mass, I'm going to put BL3 over 3, that's the top. Um, and then rather than trying to do one on the top, one on the bottom, I'm just going to multiply by the inverse, 2 over BL squared. And what do you know? That constant b this whole thing goes away and my l squared cancels out two of my l cubes so i get two times l over three which is exactly what it wanted me to prove now this might seem a bit daunting um, it would be worth a lot of points if the ap test asked you to do it and you would get a lot of points for just saying this equation that you know how to use it and then attempting to integrate and get some of these points. So it, it's kind of like a high risk, high reward type of problem. They're likely to ask you how you would find this center of mass without calculus and instead by an experiment. And it's stupidly simple. Here's how they would write this. Suppose that you are not given the location of the center of mass of the bar. Describe an experimental procedure that you could use to determine it, including the equipment that you would need. Now, if you can imagine, the center of mass is the balancing point of an object. So all you have to do is balance it on something. You could balance it on your finger. You could balance it on like a triangle or something that has a really thin point. Uh, or you could just kind of push it off the edge of the table until it begins to tip. Then you find the balancing point. And guess what? Those are the actual answers that you have on this question. Example one, place the bar on top of a fulcrum, i.e. the top of a prism. It's like a glass triangle. Adjust it till it's balanced. Example two, place the bar near the edge of a desk or table. Push it until it hangs off and is ready to tip. Really, all you have to do is write something to get two points that says you balance it and use something to measure that. That something would be like a meter stick. That's it. Congratulations. You now know everything about the center of mass. So, so good. So, so good.